ähm, obwohl wir jetzt fünf Minuten später anfangen, vielleicht trotzdem pünktlich aufhören kannst. Ja, ja, es ist so, dass es natürlich ist Vortrag und, und Workshop sollte separat sein. Ja? Ja. Und ich habe schon hin und her geguckt, wie viel Sie in, praktisch, in Practical Session überhaupt schaffen. Und weil das sowieso online ist, die Frage war, können wir Practical Session mit Kiew und Kharkov zusammen machen oder sind dann die Leute einfach zu dem? Nein. Okay, also es ist schon spät jetzt. Also ich denke, müssen, dass ich fange Das müssen wir an. vielleicht separat besprechen, Olga. Ähm, die Teilnehmer sitzen jetzt. Ich würde jetzt ähm, eröffnen, okay? Also die Lektor. sind die jetzt mit Computer, die sind für, für Practical Session vorbereitet, oder? Moment, das muss ich mit Alina besprechen. Alina, Olga fragt, ob sie für die Practical Session vorbereitet sind. Ja, natürlich. Ich möchte jetzt das äh, sagen. Okay. Ja, und, äh, wir haben alles in Vorab, äh, wir haben alles äh, Agenda hinzugefügt und jetzt möchte ich das erklären. Okay. Okay, ich, falls das nicht geht, falls Sie nicht mitmachen, würde ich einfach ein Live-Demo machen, Practical Session als Live-Demo, weil das ist sehr anders. Das, das geht dann auch schneller. Und ja, dann hast du auch Workshop sozusagen auf deinem Report. <lacht> okay, ähm Alina startet jetzt. Markus, wie, wie hören mich die Leute? Die sehen dann Slides auf dem Monitor oder gucken sie YouTube? Die, die Alina erklärt das gerade. Okay. Laut, laut bitte. that have been uploaded to Kuba, please go to the agenda to Dr. Olga Krebs uh, workshop and find all of the materials there. You can use mobile app, you can use web app, please. Markus, the hands-on step-by-step instructions are not there. I just send them by email and they are in a online. So people are there, Olga. Okay. Just wait a minute, please. Alina is explaining. Ah, okay. Nice. Yeah. Alina, take off your mask that people can understand you better. Everything is uploaded in Hua. Please go to the agenda. Uh, that should be explained by Dr. Olga Krebs. I have no idea. So she prepared three documents and probably uh, she will tell about each document in detail. And uh, then I assume that I will start with the lecture part yeah, and then I'll go to the workshop part. Yeah, please correct me, Olga, if I'm... Olga kann dich nicht verstehen, yeah. glaube ich. Yes, I can kommen, hear her. Yeah, here is microphone. No, microphone is here. Oh no, here. It's doubled. Markus, I can hear Alina. You can hear her, okay. Yeah, I can. I, I'm unmute here. Mm -hmm. So, Olga, did you hear what I said? So I just explained yes, very good. the first mm -hmm. part with your lecture and then uh, you'll go to workshop and everything is uploaded in Hoover app and please go to the agenda mm -hmm. to lectures for Dr. Olga Krebs and there you can find uh, three documents and uh, I think Olga, you will explain uh, these documents and give some instructions and yeah and we'll start with lecture passport yeah this yeah and uh, our your workshop and lecture uh, is streaming uh, on our youtube channel now from the backs to youtube 
So that was uh, your question. Yeah. So our students uh, don't have separate uh, Webex account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is why they should uh, come close to the microphone in case if you have questions, you can go close and ask. Please, uh, when uh, it's time for workshops. And now, did you mean everything related to these documents? Did you find them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, Olga, I think uh, you can start. And everybody ready? So this, you can start with lecture. And, uh, okay. Do you see my shared screen? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. see everything. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the lecture about the fair data management. I'm really happy to to talk after Jan because he actually made already an introduction to me about the importance of publicly available and fair annotated data for for other people who who, we, who will use your data. And now I just small outline. I'm very sorry not being able to be present in this room as much as I could see on, on YouTube streams. You are a nice team and, and the workshop is running very, the school is running very interesting and people have a lot of fun. I have to do it distantly and I hope you can hear me very well. Otherwise, please interrupt. And uh, th there were another slot to present your German institution. I just added it to, to my presentation I, to show you Heidelberg, Heidelberg Institute for Theoretical Studies, SDBV Group and myself. Then we will talk what fair data is or maybe what unfair data is. Uh, as a third, I will show you the fairdom is a project and Fairdom Hub as a platform and how we support our users and actually also public with a data verification process. And then we have a practical session. So I assumed that for this session you have your notebooks you where you only need a browser, nothing else, and that you got in advance a file I sent with username and password login just to avoid wasting of time for registration. And if not, just let me know at the end of the lecture so we can do it as a live demo on, on, on my browser. And, and you can, because the instance we set up for this training will be available for one month, you can also do some exercises after. So don't worry if you won't be able to follow all the steps. So this is a Heidelberg, nice, very famous view to the old castle, over a thousand years old, is a university town situated at the river Neckar in just 60 kilometers south from Frankfurt. And, and um, oh, sorry, the population number is wrong. It, it's 150,000, <laughs> the five disappeared. <laughs> and a quarter of this um, population are the students. It's not only Heidelberg University, but most famous is, of course, Heidelberg University with 25,000 students. And there are also a lot of different research institutions, big campus, um, where medical and life science uh, institutions are placed. And there is also one quite famous place up the hills of Heidelberg is a pass through the forest called Philosophenweg or Philosopher's Trail. And I don't know if it's legend or true, but um, what, what is true is that 
one of the first topics you could study at the Heidelberg University, which is the oldest university in Germany, was a philosophy. And for example, Hegel was teaching there. And the professors took students outside uh, to, to make a lecture, um, the fresh air in the forest, and to get a new inspirations. The Heidelberg Institute for Theoretical Studies, where I am working, is, is a private, non-for-profit institution. was established in 2010, but with this name, with the HITS name. Actually, the institute exists uh, since 1998, as Klaus Chira, one of the SAP founders, took the money he won <laughs> with this with this company and put it into foundation to support science. And in the first name of the institution was European Media Lab. This is why the HITS officially exists from 2010. Even I'm working there from 2003. It conducts basic research in natural science, mathematics and computer science, with a, with a main focus on processing, structuring, and analyzing complex data, and developing of such computational method in software, how you, for example, have seen in Jan's presentation. But the range of, of fields where data is coming from is very broad. It, we have an astronomics and astroinformatics group. We have a group studying about physics of cellular objects. We have a data mining and uncertainty quantification group. We have two groups dealing with modeling proteins, me mechanical modeling and, and biomechanic and cellular modeling of them. And we have a scientific database and visualization group I belong to. I have a question in between. Do you see my pointer? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, scientific database and visualization group. Our mission is to improve the data. Not only data storage, but also the data content. For f mainly for the life science data, making this storage, search, and processing simpler and, and more, more trustable for the domain experts who are not, not a computer scientist. Here we, I have, we have two pictures, one from 2003, uh, where you see our, the founder of the group and our first boss, Isabel Rojas. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lower picture is um, actually the first meeting of the whole group together since this uh, lockdown and COVID time began. We, we are completely working from home. And we met this summer just for outing and, and yeah, seeing each other. So we employ computer science method, notably human computer interaction and information retrieval as a, as a new methodology, as well as a domain knowledge. And here you have a small list of, of logos of the projects we are involved into. There are actually much more. But I would like to mention one. This is Sabio RK. This is a database with a curated reaction kinetic data. As the systems biology era started, the people realized, especially theoretician people doing modeling, realized that the most of the data available, like um, kinetic data for biochemical reaction, is available in the papers. And it's very hard to extract them in a proper way to integrate into the model. So our first project still continuing, completely supported by Klaus Chira Foundation, uh, but also used in the several projects with the public universities and research institutions. And 
so people in our group and, and, and a bunch of students are reading this paper and using the special interface, inserting it into this database, annotating properly all the components in reactions like reaction itself, to cake ID, the proteins, enzymes, to the uniprot ID, and so on. Uh, another project which, which I, I'm working on is a FAIRDOM, which also um, continues since 2008. It's a providing infrastructure and support for actually everybody. Originally, we started with a project we were funded for. And, and this is building, building infrastructure and also changing the culture of using teaching of people, of especially of young people. So I think one third of my time, of my working time, I do teaching in a young scientific school, summer schools and winter schools. This is the first autumn school. And actually, I'm biologist by training. I was born in Kazakhstan, but my family, my ancestors, has a very close connection to Ukraine. They lived there since um, 18th century, middle of the 18th century, uh, till the Second World War. Then they were deported to Kazakhstan, where I was born and have studied at the Kazakh State University biology and did the doc doctoral thesis in molecular and cellular genetics. And I spent 19 years in the wet lab. To, in, in 2000, I, at the conference, I met people from German Cancer Research Center who tried to make first, this were bioinformatics people, make the first platform where the data from the lab can be at least semi-automatically integrated. They invited me and since this, since 2000, I working in, in a lab environment with the lab people, but not doing um, experimental work by myself. So this is more now data modeling, data curation, data design, data stewardship, whatever names you have <coughs> for this. This has got a new job where actually people with a biological background are important. Like an example in Uniprot, 100 people are sitting and doing this curation manual, semi-manual, <coughs> semi-automatic, taking data published somewhere and organizing it in a proper relational database. And now we go to the data topic. As, as you heard in the previous talk and also in some uh, young people talks today, uh, theoreticians, people doing analysis or modeling, they need very much the freely available, open and well-structured and well-annotated data, which is not easy, but it's getting better. But in the last decade, there were few actually alarming publications which have published results of analysis how reproducible is the data. And I think most shock was this race standards for preclinical cancer research, where 53 landmark publications in high-ranked journals were analyzed. Uh, in, and experiments were repeated by other people, and 47 could be could not be reproduced. Of course, there are several reasons for not reproducibility of the data. Uh, some biological reasons, but we will today focus on just one reason. Very often, data can be not reproduced because no proper description of the whole workflow of experiment, of whole experimental workflow, of the data analysis workflow is available. Not even for the authors, you know the story. The postdoc has gone and all the data was on his PC. 
and 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 this was in a in a format uh, something like a lab jargon and they could not they could not reproduce it because an information was missing Back. another another paper published results which has been obtained in a um, Center for Biological Evaluation Research Food in Drug Administration in US, where people was not able to reproduce even the own experiment. And this graph shows how the numbers looks uh, in the different disciplines and biology together with the chemistry. Uh, actually, they are bad enough all, but so, so the worst place. And so people have been asked why is it not reproducible and um, the answers you see here which I already mentioned um, the manual text and reanalysis not coded intermediate and final data not generated by deterministic projects or I just don't know as a reaction to address this problem and, and to, to, sorry, I just closed the door. Very different initiative in the European realm have started to, to make guidelines, to write the documents. We were involved in this process. It, it took over one year and Dutch Tech Center for the Life Sciences, DTL and the FAIR Data Initiative were collecting this. And as they have published FAIR guiding principles for scientific data management and stewardship. And now if you apply as a scientist uh, in, a, in, a, in a certain call in the EU or for example in an ERANET uh, for funding for scientific project, you have to provide so-called data management plan, which should follow this fair data guiding principles. So also one mm, relevant part of, of our work in the team is helping people to write such data management plans, not because they are stupid, because we just realized people do not know. So this guidelines is a quite a long document describing in a very detailed sometimes, but sometimes in a, in a very fuzzy way what is a findable accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. Actually, this R is not only reusability, but this is also reproducibility. So another survey has found that 80% 80, 80 of researchers do not know what FAIR data means. So we also doing this job, we explain because this has to be changed. The cost for data being unfair, you see here, this is EU report, it was a 26 billion Euro per year is a cost of it's a cost of data which is produced but not available to others. This report aims to estimate the cost for EU community based on a series of measurable indicators. So the data has been produced. Very often people measure like let's say twenty thousand human genes expression profiles and they are looking just for, for the group of genes interesting for them. But the whole data can be used to train algorithms or in other biological projects. And, but only if people really can trust that the data is, is described in a proper way and in the metadata, the data describing data is available as well. So just from this document, the, in the short form, uh, 
uh, what fair, fair means in, in every single letter. So findable is uh, that metadata is, are assigned a globally unique persistent identifiers. So that there is a one place having identifier where this data can be found also 10 years later. Why 10 years? Uh, because if, if you submit a paper to the journal and, and you have a supplementary material, the journals ensure that this supplementary material will be kept for 10 years. I don't know who put this exactly on the 10 years, but it is like it is. So, say, repositories like with experimental data like gene expression, omnibus, or also Fairdom Hub, have to ensure, and we do, that the data will be there if, if you have an identifier. So it will, after 10 years, you will find it. The rich metadata, it means all the data about data, which sample <coughs> has been used, which organism, which strain, which cell type, which treatment were applied. And metadata clearly, explicitly includes the identifiers of the data it describes. Identifiers are, for example, protein, <coughs> uniprot ID for proteins. So there are different diff batch of, of, of resources you can refer to. It depends on which organism you work, like for human data or for mice data or for Arabidopsis data, are quite good repositories. Uh, uh, curated and, and analyzed by experts. But for some other, you don't have this chance, like th thermophilic organisms, which only few people are working on them, but still. And across these resources, it should be something like a common schema, not one and the same schema. But if you, if you, define something as a gender in one database, it should be the same as meaning as a gender in another database. Accessibility of data is very often misunderstood as an openness. No. So there is sensitive data we just heard, like the patient's data. And this cannot be available to everybody, but it should be accessible under certain conditions, like GDPR, conditions or other like licensing if, if authors of the data provide the licensing condition for their data but accessibility also trivable using these identifiers using standardized com standardized communication protocols which allow such authentication or authorization metadata should be accessible even if data are not long available. It, it sounds maybe a little bit confusing, but very often the high throughput data has needs a very, very huge physical space, which also means costs. So, and, and I know like comic groups like photos from stars, and this um, form in transferred form. It's it's not not but on a on a surface of this repository you have a metadata set by this experimentalist five thousand pictures were done from this space and and this can be then retrieved interoperability I think you 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 saw now uh, in in a set you very often integrate into your analysis the similar data from very different resources. In many countries, including Germany, it is a big problem because the hospitals, every hospital has an own database or interface to store the patient that have to be collected. You every time need to do this mapping of attributes data model, data schema, mapping. And so the integration is also for reproducibility to, to compare them into environment in, in your place, 
getting it from the different place using not only different languages and, and to describe it or formats, but also using different terminologies. So metadata use a formal, accessible, shared, in broadly applicable language for knowledge representation. And metadata use vocabularies that follow fair principles. This is a long story. We will have some examples. Metadata include different references to other metadata. You, you, you always do something which is based on a previous research, yours or, or other people. Reusable or reproducible to us, it means metadata are richly described with plurality of accuracy and relevant attributes. So it means for every type of experiment, like we have, we have heard now, like gene expression data using uh, genomic DNA or using a PCR technique, for these methodologies, a minimum information required to understand this certain type of experiment have been created by community, not, not by people writing this document. This is, has been done by community. It needs to be accepted. These are really volunteers and advocates developing things like SBML standard for model description and so on. So the ultimate goal of FAIR is to optimize the reuse of data. To achieve this, metadata and data should be well described so that they can be replicated and or combined in the different settings. We started this work, FAIR DOM project, 2008, as a part of ERANET called SISMO, System Biology of Microorganisms. And this was a f like 90% of, I think there were 400 people in the whole consortium uh, in, in, uh, divided in 12 different projects and have produced very, very different data and models and analysis tools and analysis algorithms. So what is a typical high throughput data is produced by machines. And, and there are different machines, and different machines have a different outputs. And special, normally the provider of the techniques like mass spec also provides an analysis tool which understands this language and very often without human interaction. Yeah. So it, this is a certain method. This is a marketing. Compare such results of raw data, you know, for high throughput screening, raw data is very important for reproducibility, for reproducibility of analysis results. You know that, that the different way can be applied. So we have a small data, which is usually, uh, uh, very usually, the so most used database in the world is an Excel. So 95% of data, small data from experiments in the lab, not high throughput, not from machines, are in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet. And this such data is very difficult to structure because of underlying quantitative framework. So this diversity and large quantity of the data in system biology, especially in system biology, also in other science for sure, calls for well-engineered data management system that not only collect, bundle, and structure the stuff, but also relate corresponding data to each other in a hierarchical way, enable collaboration partners. So it means a platform not for publishing your final data, but platform where project can cooperate with each other from the very start of the project. So the name of our project, FairDOM, means findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable data, SOPs and models. So 
SOPs is our standard operating procedures or protocol, and also, of course, workflows like, like for about Galaxy. Uh, this is a very short history. So we we develop a platform and, and the software behind this platform, this platform called Fairdom Hubs, the software name is SIG. You will see this in the slides. Is SIG is also open source and open code. And we have not only the central fair, the people can download and implement their local solution. And many of such projects, like this, for example, Lysim, this is a national project, uh, which started actually already uh, 2004, but the name was a virtual lever, and then it was a Lysim, and now it's a Lysim cancer. And this is what gives sustainability for using for developing and using such platform which we are doing. Uh, in in a, in a red frames, you see the European era nets. The, this is where up to 20, um, the era net is European, but non-European country can participate in, in them. And they collect the money from countries, make a call to the certain topic. And this first, I mentioned Sismo project, has decided this this was a really good idea to have an extra budget to to get something they didn't know at that time what but this has got a fair dom at that time we called it sismo db because it was for sismo and we are spe spe yeah we have a special This to other project. We didn't start from scratch, of course. There are many, many projects which develop such repositories for the smaller purposes, like Galaxy for the workflows, bio models where the, the models are stored, or JWS for models. You have a slide share where people can put their presentation. You have a PubMed, of course. You, you have a bench of uh, structured databases and under ABI umbrella like INA for European Nucleotide Archive and so on. So as we started to develop our system here in the, in the middle is a, is a software we have developed. It, it's really not just a database. metadata level, interlinked and organized, but this is, we see it as a catalog. If people use their own LIMP system, like for example, OpenBIS or any other ELAP journal, they just integrate it without copying data. If you put your data into public repository like a pride or gene expression omnibus or biosamples, you can just link it. I, this is an important point that you don't have, you, we, we, and, but on this level, these repositories are speaking the same language. It means the integrity, integrability of the data is given by design. 